Jump into the next topic of discussion. JJ Reddick. JJ Reddick had his introductory press conference. Yes, sir. And I mean, we already know why he got the job. Why? Because his bestie is LeBron. And now I'm wondering at this point if the whole thing was a setup on Danny Hurley. Um to make it look like they really wanted him when the reality was they didn't, and they knew he wouldn't take eleven million. So they lowballed him and not paid him what he should have been what he needed to get paid to stay in LA. And they really wanted JJ Reddick, but they wanted to make it look like, yeah, we tried to get this two back to back national champion coach who would never have fit properly with the Lakers, in my opinion, just because he's too players, professional basketball players just can't take that type of in your yeah, face. So stuff. why would you offer him the truck or the boatload if you, you're not even 11, sure. Because, because, because you knew $11 million wasn't enough to keep But you're him. not even you, sure if he can translate from college to the NBA. Why? Again, like I just said, I think it was it could have – was it possibly a setup? I don't know. I'm, it's, a, it's, a, it's a speculation. Yeah, I know. I get it. I'm, what I'm telling you right now is J.J. Reddick got four years for $32 million, $8 million a year. He said yes. And we knew he would say yes. And he comes out in this press conference – and says he's grateful, says, you know, the game is evolving and you have to be adaptable and mm-hmm. the expectation is championships. Well, I don't know why you're expecting championships from this franchise. Although Dalton Connect is a pretty damn good ad- and, you know, addition. You know, he, he's ex- – but this is where J.J. Reddick – oh, man. <sighs> J.J. Reddick's ego is really large. Like, the level of arrogance – so he From fits JJ, in. So he fits in LA, perfect. The level of air, well, the level of arrogance when you come in a press conference, and you and you who have never coached even fucking little league, he let them know that. Co- yeah, comes in and says his experience was playing for Mike Shashevsky, and his experience was playing in the NBA. Huh? And talking, he said, in talking to players and great, yeah, and that, makes you, that, that, that makes you a, that makes you the Lakers coach, yeah. And then at the end, towards the end, he claims <laughs> he claims that he never spoke to LeBron, which we know they did all their speaking before he was interviewed, because we're not stupid. In fact, when he said that, someone in the background said, "What? Like, come on, like bullshit." And they said, "They said, no, they said, come on." I guess they're from our podcast because. We know that's bullshit. We're not stupid. Now, do I believe that maybe he didn't speak to him from the day he was interviewed yep. until the day he was offered, which was like a week? Yeah, possibly. To be, so that he could not lie and say that that's what happened. But we know they had conversations in March, April, May. You don't have, like, you're telling me that this guy who wants to be a head coach you're doing a podcast with him, and it never the t- the conversation was never brought up one time. Yeah, I was born not I was born in the morning. It wasn't yesterday morning. Um, and then at the towards the end, he's asked about if he feels like you know he has to something to pr- like. He says he says by the way, no more podcasts. Yeah, he ain't doing no more podcasts right now. But that. He's does he have anything to prove, or because of his lack of experience and whatever? And and he goes on that. Oh, I don't really give a fuck. And bro, I I don't know if you've ever had a job and you're sitting next to your job next to your because I've never I've never seen a player introduced at a press conference Mm -hmm. who signs a deal. Yep. And it's sitting next to his boss and it starts spouting off F bombs. I curse. We know I curse. Yeah. I, I am not doing an introductory press conference as the head coach of a team and cursing. Like all he can say is, I don't care. Whoa. No, he has to he has to emphasize how much he doesn't give a fuck what you think, what I think, what anyone thinks. Whoa. And that's perfectly fine. But it is Arrogant as fuck. Yeah, it is. In it's 
shitty. It's embarrassing. You're supposed to be a role model, dude. You're a, you're a head coach. You're supposed to act like a little bit of a role model because you're supposed to be a leader. If you're cussing up a storm in, in January, I don't care. This is your introductory press conference. He's all, There's also an article that came off um, on, um, I think it was Bleacher Report, that absolutely crushed him. I'll find it, um, and I'll, I'll send it to you. But he got crushed because he kind of took shots at people in podcasts. Your entire career in media started in podcast. Mm -hmm. That's how you got your jobs doing ESPN. ESPN didn't hire you, then you did the podcast. You were doing the podcast. Yeah. ESPN hires you. You you live on first take. You say some outlandish bullshit, insult the history of the NBA, janitors, bus drivers, garbage men, plumbers. 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 It was, it was, plumbers. It was, it was a bunch of them. But you insult most of the former players in the league. You end up being the top guy now for ABC and a week, and, and a, two months later you're the head coach of the Lakers. That's your experience and you you think that you don't have anything to prove? I mean I, I don't know. You, 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 he shows no grace. He shows no humility. None. His first life, I'm grateful. And that's as humble as he was the entire press conference. He shows no grace, no humility, no true appreciation. No, nothing. Just I'm an asshole, and I'm gonna show you what Listen an asshole I am. Listen here, Rudy. His job is to coach the Lakers. Anything yeah. else don't fucking matter. Oh, now okay. I got the f bomb in me like JJ Reddy. He done brought it to me. His job is to coach the Lakers. His job is to get it done with the Lakers. Anything else, it doesn't freaking matter. His job is to come in, in there and make this a championship team. That's what's suspected in LA. I don't know why. Just because they got. 17, 18, 17 banners, and they went to 32 championships. That's what's suspected out there, no matter what the roster is. But he he, he understood the expectation. He knows what's going on. And I want J.J. Reddick to be his true self. If J.J. Reddick cusses and says F-bombs, then come out there and cuss and say f bomb. This is what the whole media has turned into now. Nobody goes on the freaking mic and just says regular words anymore. You hear these all these players and, and, and coaches interviews and after the games, they're they're cursing. It's not like the old days and oh we can't say this word and that word and we get a fine. No, it things have changed. And if that's what JJ Reddick is, be JJ Reddick. JJ Reddick is you know, he understands what's comes with it, with the territory. He knows that he has to talk to LeBron James about certain things and and, and we could call him his puppet, but your best player and your coach has to be on one accord. LeBron James has to accept coaching, and J.J. Reddick has to know how to coach him and know that there are certain things that's not going to fly, and LeBron has earned it. No doubt about it. LeBron, in 20 years, has earned to be the player, the coach on the floor. Most coaches have their coach on, their floor, on the floor, and that's their point guard. Chris Paul is the coach on the floor. Uh, uh, most top point guards who've been around the league, Steve Nash was the coach on the floor. And if you can be my coach on the floor, we have to relate. We have to talk. We have to make sure that everything is communicated well. You have to be the other my coach on the floor. And that's what LeBron is going to be for him. I don't have a problem with their podcast. I don't have a problem with their relationship. It's cool. As long as they get wins and they find a way to do it. And I think J.J. Reddick was the right man for the job. But he's coming in. He knows LeBron. He seems like a no-nonsense guy. He has his ways of how he thinks basketball should be played. I think he gave away a little bit too much at the press conference. He told their strategies a little bit too much. But what, what, what did he tell? He told them what they wanted to do. If you know, crash the rebounds from the sides and oh you know, wow, what a, what a strategic, what a strategic but anyway, thing. But anyway, they would have found out. Now, how he's going to implement it? That's that's we're gonna see it. We're gonna see it. We're gonna agree with it. We're gonna disagree. He's gonna be the most dived in on coach. We're gonna dissect him on every move he makes, and 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 he's here for it. He understands it. And he's ready for it. We don't know how good he's gonna be. That's just how basketball is. You can have all the X's and O's, and you can seem like this guy, but when it comes down to it, can you get the job done? Will he get the job done? He has two top twelve players. Okay. And let's talk about let's talk about okay before we get to that. Yep. JJ Reddick the next day 
was put on blast by an author, you know, Halima, Halima Nash, yep. founder of startup Rosecrans Ventures. And she posted on X that I've been called, only been called the N word to my face by a white man once mm. in my life. Yeah. And it was on the campus of Duke University while I was doing work with the basketball team. Okay. And today he was named the new head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. Yes, ma'am. What a world. Why did she wait this long to say anything? He was on ESPN. He was on his podcast. He's been a top, you know, he was in the NBA. And you wait till now to bring this up? It seems like you're clout chasing this lady. Because you could have said it a long time ago. You waited to this exact moment till you become the coach of the Lakers. Come on, man. Cut the sh you know, my favorite my favorite slogan and favorite words right now is cut the shenanigans, man. We don't want to hear about it now because you had ample amount of time to bring it up. And you wait till now to bring it up when he become the coach. Man, cut the shenanigans. Cut the malarkey. We don't want to hear about it, man. There was so much time that you could have told us about this. And now you want to get in your feelings because he's a coach and you want to bring spotlight on yourself to get some national media acclaim for it? No, man. I don't want to hear about that shit. Move out my face. Uh, you may she feel differently about it. I don't she, like it. She also said for context, this was years ago, and I'm a believer that we all have space to grow, specific, especially from our college level maturity. We live in a world where these exchanges happen, and the intersection of race and privilege and lack of accountability all collided with that presser. I agree with you. Um, I know people who know this person who are on my Facebook timeline that are members of my organizations and they all swear by her. Um, I don't know her at all. I, I answered this. I said the same thing you said. Well, why did you say something when he got, I don't know, drafted? Why didn't you say something while he was at Duke? Why did you say something when he played 15 years in the NBA? Why didn't you say something when he got the job at ABC, ESPN, Disney? Why didn't you say something? Like, why didn't you say, why would you wait till now? I agree with you on that. Does it make it not true? I didn't say it didn't make it not true. I, I guess the thing, does it make it not true? And, if, and Steve Nash, and I mean, Steve Nash, JJ Reddick denies it. Mm -hmm. So that is, you know, he denies it. I figured he would, and I'm sure LeBron James will protect him. <laughs> but what, I mean, what do you, th should the Lakers just ignore it? Yes. You got your okay. coach, you hired him already. We're going to go back to something that can't be proven. What what facts, What how can you, like, what can you show? What, what do you got I don't recorded? Know. Like, what? Like, are know. you Vivian, Viviano, Stiviano, whatever the girl named that recorded Donald Sterling? Or, like, oh, she, I've been watching she, clips she, lately, so. Yeah, you have I, all I, that, I, haven't, I haven't seen that you yet. You have but. that? No. Then then what can we, he say, she say, he say he didn't, you say he did. I mean, move on at this point. I mean, has his character been called into question in the last 15 years? No, I haven't heard anybody say anything. Thing wrong about JJ. Well, his, his, his character was called in the question when he referred to the freaking history of basketball as bus drivers, janitors, no, no, that's not, no, that's not, that's, that's not, a character that's flaw, not a, bro. That's not a character flaw. That's, that's not, a character flaw. That's how he feels about. That's older. how he feels. He plays a position where he all he does is shoot the ball and 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 literally just shoots jump shots. He played no defense for a career. JJ Reddick he's, averaged thirty eight points in the seventies. All right, I'm not twenty nine. Yeah, it looked yeah, like he's like, back at yeah. yeah, he never averaged twenty nine at Duke, so that that would help. That would help. What twenty five? Uh, yeah, I don't even know if he averaged that much. I don't know. I'm not looking at least twenty. Up. At least twenty. I'm I, I, yeah, probably averaged at least that. I I don't know what it was. He did four years, right? All right, three years. He did four. Yeah, he did four years. Yeah, he did. He, he yeah, that's which is why he's been criticized by other media members saying this man Michael K from um, Yes Network said. Where are we in society where a guy that went to Duke and has an education as a smart guy is dropping F-bombs in a press conference? Man, that's just how some people talk, man. No, it's not. Yes, it is how some no, people talk. No, it's not. Then why is he cussing on ABC during during broadcast? Because that's different. No, it's not. <laughs> how is it different, Nick? It's a little bit more freer as a... Bro, 
Well, it's not different. Have you ever been to a corporate meeting in your life? Well, that 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 that's a corporation, bro. <laughs> You're the representative of the corporation. We've never heard Pat Riley in 35 years drop f bombs on a press conference. I, don't I can't remember one. Pat Riley says. So. I haven't heard Eric Spolster do that in 15. It's just a certain level of use some fucking sense. And I'm not trying to sound like Mr. Curmudgeon or um, I'm all hoity-toity. No, I cuss like a freaking sailor. Yeah. I literally, at times when I don't curse, it's because I write shit out <laughs> on a damn prompter to read because I don't want to curse. Mm -hmm. Because I know how much I do. And I've had people message me saying, damn, you're cursing a lot. So I try to not do it, but it's part of my language. This man is an, is, is, is an ABC first take all his stuff so he know how to do it when he know how to do it obviously he felt comfortable in that in that situation where he could do it yeah that, that everyone in the room was like oh my god does he just say that i guess oh by the way i i forgot to mention we gotta go back to it because that's what i wanted to talk about i'm done with jj reddick are you yeah all right thank you for watching come on now the podcast please be sure to subscribe like comment and ring that bell so you get up to the minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.